welcome to part two of our e-bike of the year test. And in this video, we're going to be covering all of the top direct sales brands. And what a lineup we have too, with heavy hitters from the likes of Intense, Radon, Vitus, Commensal, YT, and Canyon. And it's the Canyon Spectral on CF 8.0 that's the most expensive bike here. While surprisingly, the cheapest at just under five grand is the Intense Taser, with a full carbon frame and a head badge that's steeped in heritage. We've got a much wider spread of travel though, with around 140 millimeters on the Radon Render, and nearly 170 millimeters on the YT Decoy and the Vitus E Sonnet. While in terms of wheel sizes, there are two 29ers and four mullet bikes. Powering five of the bikes are Shimano motors, with only the Radon shaking things up with a Bosch unit. So we've got a pretty diverse mix of bikes for this test. So what, what was your criteria when uh, putting it yeah, together? Um, the only criteria for the test were that you could buy the bike online, well, it cost roughly five and a half grand, and basically turn up your door in a box. So that's okay. why we've got a spread of wheel sizes, a spread of travels. And to be fair, some brands don't make multiple platforms with lots of different travel, like you were, when you were buying an analog bike. So. so in my test, I had like full mix of wheel sizes from yeah. 27 and a half to mullet. Yeah. This one's a little bit more focused, isn't it? Yeah, it's focused in one respect in the fact that there's two 29ers and four mullet bikes, but there's not really a consensus on the mullet bikes. YT and Intense both have 2.8 inch rear tires. Um, Vitas have gone with a 2.5 inch rear tire and Canyon has a 2.6 inch. And yeah, and having the different rear tire sides made it a little bit more tricky to fit our control tires, but we managed to get them on, on all the bikes. And also your test was a little bit more focused in terms of the motors as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've got five Shimano motors and one Bosch motor, but I should point out that we've got three different Shimano motors. So we've got the older E8000. Yeah the lower powered E7000 yeah. and the most modern EP8. Yeah. Right, so we've taken an overview of all the contenders. Now it's time to look at all the bikes in greater detail. So first up, we've got the Intense Taser and it's easy to overlook Intense as a direct sales brand, isn't it? Yeah, totally. I mean, I've done that a couple of times in, in a couple of tasks because I associate Intense with like Palmer, America, the M1, it's 20 plus years of heritage. Mm. I just don't associate it being a direct sales brand, but um, they're doing a really good job. And it's the cheapest bike here. It's the cheapest bike here and it's the lightest bike here. Right. It's the only bike to go under 50 pounds. Okay. And why is that? Um, full carbon frame helps, but also like hidden inside the down tube is a 504 watt hour battery. So it's got the smallest battery capacity. So it's a huge weight saving. To yeah, be you're looking there. about a kilo or something, aren't you? It's a lot. Yeah. It depends on what you're comparing it mm. to, whose battery and what size. But you got to appreciate this bike was launched in 2018. So it's also the oldest bike here, um, yeah. which is impressive given that it's numbers, the geometry, the sizing are all pretty much still on point. So they've taken quite a unique approach with that battery mount, haven't they? Yeah, it's got a door that comes off the side of the down tube. And then there's an, there's an external battery inside the down tube. And then there's a strap to help you pull it out. And you also need a key. Right, okay. So it's a little bit of a, it's a bit complicated to get the battery in and out. You just, to charge it, you just flip the door off. You can put the, plug the charger straight in and switch it on and off. There's a little seal cover, rubber kind of seal that you, you push the button from the underside of the Under down tube. Under the down tube, yeah. yeah. So it's not, it's not just the battery that's unique on this bike. It's also got the lower powered Shimano motor, yeah, hasn't it? This is the only bike in test with the E7000 motor. And that's, it's a newer motor than the E8000, um, but it's only got 60 Newton meters of torque. So it's a little bit underpowered compared to the other bikes. And while you don't really notice that when you're sprinting and just pedaling around, where you do notice it is when you've got like a steeper sort of grindy climb and you're going up through the gears and your cadence drops off. You just notice that riders on the other bikes just start to, they start to creep away from you, but they haven't changed their effort. Yeah. So on the Intense, they use like, an, uh, like a VPP sort of system, don't they? Yeah, really? it's a JS tuned suspension. So it's a twin link design and with counter rotating links. So yeah, very much like a VPP. Um, this bike's got 155 mil travel in the rear and it's married to a 38, Fox 38 fork with 160 mil up front. So that's like the new, bigger, burlier Fox chassis. 
And how did the suspension feel on this bike? Not very balanced. Okay. And that was the key thing really that, that, that held the intense back is that we put the bars down, we put the bars up, we put volume spacers in the fork, we tried different pressures, we tweaked the shock tune, and we just couldn't get the balance of the bike to feel good all the time. Now, there's, there was moments where you're on the intense and it feels amazing, because it's, it's a big bike. And it's got a long front center, it's got a long chain stay, and it just puts you right in the sweet spot and for like loading both tires, but it only seemed to happen at a certain gradient. Then when you were climbing, it felt like the suspension would squat in and the front would lift too easy. And then sometimes when you're just sending, you just couldn't get the, the weight wasn't right on the front tire. Okay, so you were, you were trying to sort of fix it at the front, but actually it was the rear suspension that was yeah. the problem. Yeah, I think, I think it was a bit of both suspensions not feeling, having the same characteristics. And the rear is also quite no it's quite rattly and quite noisy, this bike. And I think that's kind of off, a little bit off-putting when you're riding it. So, but, so really it wasn't, if you think about it, it wasn't really the battery capacity or the lower spec motor that was holding it back. It was just the, um, the ride quality and the balance and suspension. I don't think they nailed it. Okay. And that could just be something simple as a shock tune. Yeah. So any, any other notable things with the intense? Yeah, I mean, I mean this, this, this might sound silly, but I really like the mudguard because with a lot of the bikes, especially with the 2.8 inch tires in the rear, it, when it's muddy, it brings up a lot of dirt. With a mud guard running on that lower part, section of the rear wheel, it just basically keeps all the mud away from the pivots and most, more importantly, out of the chain device. Because one thing I noticed with all the bikes that had ISCG mounted chain devices on the Shimano motors is they just get caked in mud. So summing up the Intense then. Um, it's a really affordable bike, but it's showing its age. I wouldn't be surprised if Intense brought out a brand new bike with an updated motor bigger battery capacity, revised suspension feel um, in the next six months. So next we got the Common Style Meta and that was uh, scored a seven out of 10 as well, didn't it? Yep, so we've gone from the lightest bike in test to the heaviest bike okay. in test. It's also the longest bike in test. It does look like a, a big unit, doesn't it? It is a big unit. There's a little bit of discrepancy on how much travel this bike has. On the website, it says 160 mil travel. It also says 155 mil travel in the rear, but we actually measured it at 147. Okay, so no one, <laughs> no one near either of those. <laughs> I don't know. So I really don't know what it's supposed to be on the rear. I do know that it has a 170 mil Fox 38 fork. That we can be clear about. <laughs> yes, we're 100% on that. The other thing that's really clear about this bike is that it's got the new Shimano EP8 motor. And how did that feel in comparison off to the E7000? It definitely felt like you can feel the torque, you can feel the power on the climbs and stuff. But in comparison to the E8000, which we'll get to later, I didn't really notice any advantage in power, but I did notice that it was noisier. And I'll clarify that. It's not noisier when you're pedaling. There's definitely lower resistance in the motor. It's noisier when you're coasting basically down a descent. Yeah, so the, the rattle that comes from inside the, the mechanism, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a brand new frame for 2021. It's got the internal battery. You just need an Allen key to remove it. It's got the power button on the side. It's got internal battery under the down tube, 630 watt hour. So you've got really good range on it. Um, obviously with the reduced friction in the EP8 motor, there's better efficiency. And what's really surprising on this bike is for such a big, big bike that's actually quite heavy, um, it's a really good climber. Um, that's partly due to the fact it's got quite a long chain stay, but it's also got a really steep seat angle. Okay. So you're really forward. It's really easy just to sit and spin and motor up like super steep climbs. Unfortunately, it's also got quite a high BB. So when you're coming down again, you just feel a little bit like when you're out of the saddle, you feel like you're elevated on the bike. I mean, thankfully it's got like a really long wheelbase. So the bike's still really stable. Um, but it just means you don't sort of feel in it in the same way that you do on some of the other bikes. So you kind of, you can't kind of ride it quite as, a, as aggressively and rela but relaxed at the same time. Yeah, I noticed that when I was riding it in the, in the test. It, it yeah. just didn't quite have the agility that I was sort of yeah. looking for. And may, you know what? And maybe a more powerful motor, at least in some circumstances, might help with that. I also think that it needs a lighter shock tune because what you feel with a little bit with this bike is it kind of pivots around the rear axle. So the fork goes up and down, but the shock stays quite stable. And like we're running it wide open. And in fact, on most of the bikes in this test, we were running the rear shocks wide open. So it's not just a criticism at common cell. I think it's a criticism across the board that most e-bikes have over rear shocks. There was also the thing with fit on this bike. So like I said, it's a big bike for a size large, but it's actually got quite a tall seat mast. 
It's got a 175 mil dropper post in there. And even that's as low as the seat post goes into the frame and it's too high for me. So I actually had to run the dropper a little bit dropped just from my normal riding position. So there's definitely, I mean, you can either take that as an indication that you might need to go down a frame size, or you could maybe say that common styles kind of over seat post it. And maybe with a 160 mil dropper that you could slam and give you more scope for adjusting your satellite and, and allow riders to upsize if they want to. So there's just a bit of a lack of insertion depth in there. Yeah, totally. It's a well spec bike. You've got DT Swiss rims. It comes with what's in. So, so this bike doesn't come with these tires. These are our control tires that we fitted. It comes with Schwalbe. Um, it comes with the Magic Mary front, Big Betty rear, both in 2.4, and both in super gravity casing. So, okay. like, they're really solid tires. And in fact, they don't do the bike any favors on the scales at all. But if you are riding steep, gnarly, aggressive terrain where you can kind of capitalize on that wheelbase and the claim travel, mm -hmm. They're a perfect tire for the bike. Yeah, and quite often with the e-bikes, we we find that the the actual travel number is is, is less relevant than on a, a normal bike, isn't it? Because well, like most things are less relevant. On a normal bike, <laughs> yeah, totally. Basically. Like yeah. the the how efficient it is to pedal is less relevant. Mm. You know, like your riding position for climbing is less relevant. But like joking aside, all those things are less relevant until you start doing comparative mm. testing, and then all of a sudden they become really relevant because you're you're using the traditional ride quality of each of the bikes to separate them, not the power, not the mm. motor, not the battery capacity. I mean, it's, we're just testing them like, like we yeah. test any bike. Yeah. So what, uh, what do you think Common Soul need to do to the Meta to, to sort of up the ratings a little bit? Um, lighter shock tune and a shorter dropper post or one at least with a shorter lower portion of the post. So it goes further into the frame. Right. So here we have the new Vitus E Summit, and um, the old version of this bike was incredibly popular, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, killer bike, killer value. But this is completely different, isn't it? Yeah, brand new for this year, and this is the top of the range VRX. It's got a lot of cool features, frames like ground up redesign, and they got rid of the float in shock design. It's more like a traditional rocker link four bar now. Um, there's no like seat stay bridge on the rear, so there's loads of like tire clearance. We've also done a lot of work on the front. This has got a 1.8 inch head tube. Now, it's if anybody's new... listening to that and they think, what, what is that? Yeah, it's new. It's a new standard that's coming. You see it, we're seeing it coming through on e-bikes. The traditional head tube size is 1.5. It's 1.8, it's a little bit bigger, and it's got a corresponding fork steer. It's a 1.8 inch taper, not a 1.5 inch taper. Okay, so a bit more stiffness, a bit more strength. Bigger, stronger, probably a little bit heavier too. Yep. Um, but when you've got a bike that's 50 pounds plus with 170 mil travel on the front and 167 on the rear claimed, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, so yeah. this is another, like, another big rig, isn't it? Especially with super slack head angles. And I mean, they're, they're downhill bikes and they haven't got dual crowns. So maybe yeah. having the oversized steer is like a, a good standard. And then that's in combination with the 38 mil chassis of the Zeb yeah. as well. Yeah, and in fact, the Zeb's a real asset on this bike. Like it's the ultimate fork. It's got the high and low speed compression dampen, so you can really dial in the feel of this fork. You can get the support you want from it, which is good because you're like, this bike's designed for like big, steep, like steep charging. You can like dial out the high speed, dial in the low speed. You can really set it up. It's super supple and it's a great, it's a great fork on this bike. And it looks like the move to this new standard has given them a bit more room to well, put yeah, the cables given into them room, the But they've used it up real fast. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got an Acro steering lock headset but it's also got ports in the headsets, so all the cables, and it's kind of looks, it definitely looks neater from here where all the cables come in and then they just disappear into the head tube. I'm not so sure about it though, because it means you can't get the, the stem fully down because mm -hmm. the cables still have to go in, especially like the brake hose, which is a little bit thicker. Um, so what we've actually had to do in this bike to get the front end is how we wanted it was to flip the stem upside down. Okay. So you get a little bit of a negative rise, which is kind of weird on an e-bike because not many you need to do that. And it also, it's obviously got quite a tight cable routing mm. in there because the dropper post remote feels pretty stiff. Right, okay. I think it really is the fact that the radius here is, yep, is too probably tight. too tight. And okay. The cable. Same way that you'd have it with a stiff shifter or something like that if the, if the cable routing wasn't right. And the kind of thing that, that irks me a little bit about it is that there's no alternative. Yep. There aren't ports here that have been blanked or that you can use. So you basically, 
you're kind of tied into that system. Um, so you really want to have, you'll have to work with maybe having your stem upside down or customizing the, the rise of the actual handlebar yep. itself to get, to get the position you want. And like one of the key reasons why the bars feel high is because the BB is nice and low. Yeah. And you just, it just felt like your hands are up here basically and really when you wanted them down here. The frame obviously changed a lot. We've got full alloy frame with, now it's got an internal battery, hasn't it? Yeah. So the battery, and also the battery capacity in increased. So it used to have the old five, external 504 watt hour battery. Now it's got the internal 630. I mean, it's got a charging port. It's on the, on the outside. So like you can charge it here on the back of the seat tube. But if you want to take the battery out, um, there's three small Allen key bolts that hold on the cover. So you got to remove the cover first and then remove the battery. So it would be, it'd be really nice if the cover was just integrated mm. onto the battery, um, like you have with Canyon and YT. So then you just put the Allen key in and turn it and Whole pop thing. it out. Yeah. Uh, it's just a mullet as well, isn't it? It so is. So 29, 27.5. Yeah. 2.5 inch tires, front and rear. Both double down casing, but the front tire was actually a max grip. Okay. Which is pretty slow rolling and yep. also like I kind of noticed that with the max grip front tire I didn't seem to get the range I was expecting from the 630 mm -hmm. watt hour battery so we actually changed it to a max terra tire yep. on the front in a lighter exo plus case and so like just to make it the same as all the other bikes yeah so yeah we've got a mullet configuration here and how, how were the mullet bikes versus the, the regular 29 front and rear bikes I think that the wheel size um, has less of an impact on the ride quality than all of the other things put together, such as the geometry, how the suspension felt. This bike's got really sensitive rear suspension, like really sensitive. Like yeah. it doesn't require any pressure to get it moving. But what was really noticeable, it was actually the loudest bike okay. in terms of that motor noise. Yeah. And I don't know if it's like motor and chain or just motor noise. Um, but I think because it's like at this kind of like super active rear end, it just made a lot of noise with the, from the motor. In terms of cornering, like I don't, I think with the turn in and stuff, you get a little bit of a sharper turn in with the mullet bike. And then when it gets steep, um, if you're riding really steep terrain, there's definitely advantages to having the smaller rear wheel, just so that it's not buzzing your Clearance. ass the whole time, mm. basically. I'd also say that I like the fact that they've gone with, well, one, one of the reasons why it has 2.5 inch tires front and rear is because you can't get that case in in a 2.6 or a 2.8. Yep. Which is an oversight really, because I pinch flatted, I think two of the bikes put a hole in the sidewall and one, and that's with an XO plus case. And so there's definitely a, yep. I know there's a weight penalty, but I think most of the plus size 2.8 inch tires just aren't tough enough. So what size test bike is this one? This is a large, um, and it's actually the longest reach and test. And when you're on it, it feels like a big bike. But what's really cool with what Vetus has done with this and their analog bikes is they've kind of like splayed out the seat tube. So you've got loads of seat post insertion. Um, so you can actually, it makes it really easy to ups, upsize on the bikes. Um, but what I'd actually recommend with this bike is to downsize. Okay. If you think you're borderline between the medium and the large, I'd get the medium. Okay. Um, just because I think it'll give you, it, it'll shorten the head jib a little bit. So yep. You'll have less of the handlebar height issue. Um, and it'll just make the bike feel more dynamic because I just felt that this was a big bike. And unless I had big terrain, I just felt overbiked everywhere. Yep. You sort of feel like you've got this really big bike, it's really capable, but if you're not riding DH style tracks where, they, where the bike really comes to life, it feels dull and dead everywhere else. Yeah, yeah, you need a terrain to sort of make it yep. sing, yeah. Yeah, totally. So wait, the, this looks so like the, the cube from my test, doesn't it? They pretty much got identical specs, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, even same like- Same colorway, <laughs> same colorway, same specification. But what a spec though, eh? Incredible spec for your money. And then you've got the factory level DPX2 shock, which also has like additional low speed compression adjustments. So pretty much unreal. Magura brakes, MT5s. I mean, we don't get a lot of bikes with Magura brakes and everyone that rode this bike, what the thing they commented on was how impressive the brakes were. So yeah, we had this bike as a long-termer as well, didn't we? Yeah, Paul had it for 12 months, um, proved 100% reliable. His bike had a pike, a 150 mil pike on it. This bike's got a 160 mil for it. So it's just the same, exact same frame. It's just a little bit slacker, a little bit higher at the front. And actually I think it really helps the weight distribution on the bike. Cause it's got quite long chain stays, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got long chain stays, um, but the bike's still pretty agile. And I think it could be even more agile if it had a lighter shock tune. Cause again, I mentioned it's got all of these adjustments cause it's a factory level shock. Mm. 
we ran them all wide open, yeah. every single one. So it's kind of a wasted opportunity there for Radon. The long chain states, I think, don't impede the bike in any way. In fact, they help you load the, the front end, like on flat corners and stuff. And then you've got the additional support of that fit for damper cartridge in the fork. It's really until, it, it's only when it gets really steep that you notice, ah, oh, this bike could be a little bit longer, this bike could be a little bit slacker. You've also got to remember, it's only got 140 mil travel. And that's claims, it's less yeah. than that. I think I measured at 135, 136, something like that. So it's not a big bike. Yeah, but it, fit, it feels great. I remember riding this in the, in the photo shoot and, and just really got on with, yeah. with it. It was really intuitive to ride, really Super fun. Super easy to ride. Yeah, you just get on it, ride it. And I think part of that too is like, that kind of the chainstay length and the Bosch motor make climbing super exciting. Yeah, it's still probably the, the most powerful motor in this group, isn't it? And it it's, is, it's got it, the most, definitely got the most punch. Yeah, you, you yeah. just get on it and you're like, oh, this is, this is great. Yeah, you know, you get every a, climb, you like, oh, you get a thrill. Buzzing, you get a yeah. thrill. And I think the other thing is, it's like, we noticed when we were doing the video shoot the other day that on the Shimano bikes, when you come up to something really steep and you crest it, you had to be sort of like aware of like your pedal clearance and you maybe stop to st you'd st stall your pedals just so you wouldn't clip a pedal mm -hmm. and the motor cut out pretty much instantly yep. and you'd be like oh and you panic yep. <laughs> you know what i mean you think i'm yep. going to keel over whereas on this bike you can kind of go oh i might clip a pedal there stop pedaling the overrun of the motor just gives you a little surge to keep you going get you through trouble and then you're off again yeah and i think what you get with the bosch system is you can run the lower bb and do like cheater half cranks mm. and get away with it basically mm. So this is a, one of the only bikes in the test with 29 inch wheels front and rear, isn't it? Yeah, this and the common style, um, both 29ers and both with Schwalbe, um, Magic Mary, Big Betty, tire combo and 2.4, really good tires. This bike actually had the new super trail casing. So it's lighter than a super gravity casing. So it's still, it's more reinforced than a normal casing, mm -hmm. a bit like an XO plus style, yep. great tires, but they weren't enough to stop you putting a massive flat spot in the <laughs> rear wheel. <laughs> so the DT Swiss H1700s, they're like e-bike specific mm. wheel set. Pretty light, I wouldn't say super strong. Um, and then obviously we're sort of gushing about the Bosch motor, but we've still got the same issue with the control unit in the display, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so the control unit uh, is obviously, I think the control unit was originally designed, I think, to go under the bar. So it kind of makes more sense if it's under here, but then your dropper post in the way so it can't go there, so it sits on top. Yeah, and then the, like, the magnetic kiosk display just comes off like that. So it's like this kind of digital key, so your, back, your bike cuts mm. out of, if you can't ride the bike without this, but it also means like, um, if you hit it with your knee and it shoots mm. out into the bushes and you can't find it, your bike's Kills dead. Yep. Yeah, or if you crash and you lose it, well, Imagine dead. trying to find that. Yeah, well, you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be able to find it. So I actually think they need some kind of like little linear or some sort of safety loop on it. So one thing I remember on PB's long term is he had issues with the battery cover. Yeah, I mean, I had no issues with that at all. Didn't come loose, didn't rattle. I don't know if they've made some modifications okay. to it or not for 2021. You still have the kind of rubber band down here that you kind of pop off and pull, and then, then the cover just slides off. It's pretty straightforward. It's actually easier to get to the battery than it is on the Vetus. But then you need the bloody key. Right. Yep. So you could, you could kind of forget your key and, uh, and maybe forget your display. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, you think I've got one, I've not got the other. I, for me, I'd like to, I don't think you need anything more than an Allen key to remove a battery on a, on a mountain bike, yeah, on a mountain bike. It's not like you're going to be locking this up outside a shop, is it? Definitely not. So really, it's, it's an amazing pa overall package and yeah. it rides really good as well yeah, for a great a really price, isn't it? Yeah, totally. It's a great bike and well-deserving of a nine rating. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so moving on, we've got the Canyon Spectral on. I went to the launch of this last year, this time last year, and um, came with the old motor, small battery, but this one's been upgraded, hasn't it? Yeah, upgraded, same frame layout, exactly the same frame layout as the launch bike you went on, um, but it's now got a 630 watt hour battery and a EP8 motor. So the motor bolt is straight on, um, that's, pretty, that's pretty easy. Obviously, different, slightly different casing just to make it look streamlined. So then obviously Canyon's reworked the cavity in the down tube. Um, so it's got a like, bigger port, um, which allows you to put the bigger battery in. And uh, I remember it, you know, I really, really enjoyed riding this bike on, on the launch last year. One, like one yeah. of the most sort of agile e-bikes that I've yeah. ridden. I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, it's got like Canyon's triple phase suspension design, which kind of has got nice even progression through like from sag to mid-stroke to end-stroke. 
It's also got the shortest chain stays in test. So it's got a 435 chain stay length, which is pretty much like a traditional trail bike. And I think that's what Canyon's done really well with this bike. And what I really liked about it was that it feels really similar to a regular bike. Yeah. Because the numbers are really similar to a regular bike. It's got a low BB, it's got a short rear end, it's not super long, it's not super slack. It's got 150 mil in the front, 150 mil in the rear. Actually, I measured 151. So it's the only bike to over deliver on the, prom on the promise of travel. Like I, not like I could feel that one <laughs> millimeter, but at least you know you're getting what's mm. claimed. How did the, the short change stays then? We, we know that it was a super agile bike for turning and stuff like that, but how was it on the climbs? Yeah, it's hard to keep the front down. It lifts. Yeah. Like you just notice it. You've got to be, I mean, it's really cool that Canyon's got this like e-bike specific saddle with a sort of whale tail at the end. So it's, it keeps your weight forward. It's not got a super steep seat angle. Um, so you definitely kind of maybe use the saddle or get forward on the nose. And then we've got the handlebar, which actually really helps in the climbs because although it looks like it's got a really, really short stem, the bars come forward a lot from the stem. So I think it's a, it feels equivalent to a 60 or a 65 mil stem really, yep. um, in terms, which is quite long for an e-bike. So yeah, a lot of kind of sleek into integration yep. on, on this bike, isn't there? It, it looks fantastic. And, it, and it's a really fun, like what I really liked about it, is that it is what it is. It's a trail bike. It's not like a gravity bike that kind of feels slow in certain places and you need the terrain. You can ride this bike hard everywhere and that's what makes it, that's what makes it a great trail bike. And in fact, it's the most expensive bike on test. It's six grand. And really, I'd be looking at making a bar stem replacement if this was my bike. And I might even need a mount because it's got an integrated display. Yep. So there's additional costs there that really didn't kind of like play to its favor. But I couldn't fault it in terms of ride quality. Mm. It's a great bike. So this has got the Shimano brakes on it. And um, yep. you know, we were talking about the Shimano motor rattling a little bit, yep. but these finned pads rattle as well, don't they? Yeah, they do. The cool and finned pads rattle. And they, but they're also really expensive to replace. So as soon as you wear them out, you're probably going to replace them with non-cooling fin pads. So um, Make a saving just, there. Yeah, there's and a big saving. They'll be a little bit lighter. Not that that matters, but they'll also reduce the noise on the bike. I mean, it's a sleek, stealthy machine. Um, you shouldn't have the brake pads rattling. Yep. Other than that, though, I have to say that the XT brakes on this bike were 100% consistent. Mm. Um, and they haven't been on all bikes, but this one we definitely had no issues with, like the variable bike point. Or... And when they work well, they're a pleasure, aren't they? Yeah, 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 totally. They're powerful. I don't, you, need, you need powerful brakes on an e-bike. Mm. Um, did I also say that this is the lightest bike in test with a full-size battery. Okay. Yeah, so the Intense was the lightest bike in test with a 504 watt hour battery, but if you're going 600 plus, this is the lightest bike in test. And did that make much difference to the ride quality? Maybe. Hmm. I mean, it feels easy to maneuver. It is. Yeah, it's... it feels balanced. It feels easy to maneuver. This, like we said, the shock tune could be lighter on the rear for lighter riders, but we could get it where we wanted it. And the suspension felt very balanced. Yes, the handlebars pull you a little bit more onto the front than maybe you, you feel comfortable with, but actually that helps offset the super short chain stays. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's like, it can, it's not to be sniffed at. So a great, a great all rounder, really fun and, yeah. and really dynamic, really re rewarding. Maybe not the best technical climber, but still. Yeah, still a really fun bike. So to finish up, we have the winner, our e-bike of the year in the direct sales category. It's the YT Decoy. Yeah, and it was a really easy decision. <laughs> like, I mean, if you look at this bike, compared to all the other bikes, they've all been kind of cleaned roughly the same way. This bike looks like it's had way more use than any of the other ones. And it has because we finished up the test a few weeks ago um, before doing the video. And the bike that I've ridden the most since then has been this one, and for good reason. Yeah. It's the best bike. And this is not actually a massive bike. This, this is a large, but it's not, it's not huge, is it? But it's big in terms of travel. Yep. And like, and it's burly. So it's got a 38 fork again. It's got 170 mil travel in the front. It's got the coil sprung shock on the rear, 165. 
One of the aspects that sort of dominates the ride is the coil shock, isn't it? Yeah, it totally. feels amazing. Dominates every ride when you put a coil shock on a bike. Yeah. Nearly, I'd say 99% of bikes have air shocks. And then every time you ride a coil, you go, why am I riding an air shock? <laughs> I know why we're riding air shocks is because you can put a pump on it and adjust it for a guy mm. that's 66 kilos to a guy that's 110 mm. kilos. Whereas you've actually got to change the spring rate mm. on the bike if you want, it, if you did, want to do it. With was that shock. spring rate kind of good for you? Yep, that was just that stock spring rate felt really good. And I'd also like to point out with this bike is that it's probably the only bike where I actually had to add damping. Right. Which is great. Yeah. Um, Cause it means that someone smaller than me on a smaller size that's lighter than me could get the right spring rate and then tune the rebound damping to match the spring rate. If I ran this shock um, fully wide open, it'll top out. Yep. Which is, which is exactly what you want. Cause it gives us a range. You've also got like a little like lockout lever on there. Yep. Um, so if you are doing big long climbs and you just want it to be a little bit more efficient, you can put it on there. So yeah, this, this uses the, the old motor, the, the yep. Shimano E8000. Yeah. Didn't hold it back, did it? <laughs> Didn't hold it back at all. In fact, I actually think it was an advantage. Mm. It, it, it feels fantastic. Mm. I felt more pokey. It felt, it didn't feel as powerful as the Bosch motor on the Radon, um, but it felt as good or better in every situation than the EP8 on the other bikes. It's almost worked in YT's favor really because, because of their design, they couldn't just take the old E8000 motor off and bolt in an EP8. Um, so they were kind of stuck with this. And it's fantastic because mm -hmm. it shows that you can, have an, you can have a really good bike, a really good package, and w the bikes aren't just about the motors. Mm -hmm. There's more to it than yeah. that. And the other YT decoy we had, the 29er, yeah. that also had the old motor and it yeah. also felt really punchy yeah. as well. In fact, it? I actually think it felt more punchy than this one. <laughs> like motors, obviously there's a tolerance range. So I'm, I don't know, I, I'm not gonna say we just got lucky with these, but when you've had two and they both feel like that, um, there's no reason to think that it's luck. It's supposed to have 70 Newton meters. Doesn't feel like it's got any less than the 85 Newton meter EP8. Mm. Um, obviously it's a bit bigger, it's a bit heavier, and, and, and I'm not saying that YT won't change, I'm sure they will, mm. because they'll want to have lighter, smaller, compact, they want to have, everyone wants to have the latest thing. But if you're looking at it thinking, I don't want to buy a bike that's got like inherent obsolescence, yeah. there's nothing obsolete about this yeah. bike. So another interesting aspect about the YT is it's, it's got its own battery, hasn't yep. it? It's got a 540 watt hour battery, and it's also, it's got its own system too. It's got the integrated cover here, and just two big Allen key bolts that go in the side and hold the battery. And it's super easy to get in, get out. Going from a 504 watt hour to a 540 watt hour, it doesn't sound like a big jump, mm. but there is a really appreciable um, increase in range. Um, so I don't think all batteries, were, same way that all motors aren't mm. created equally, all batteries aren't created equally either, yep. even though they have those numbers on them. Yeah. So we talked about this being a mullet, um, yep. but um, obviously there's different tire sizes employed yeah. on the different so again, we got, bikes. We've got 2.5 front, uh, 2.8 rear. And like, there'll definitely be riders that don't want that 2.8 inch rear tire just because of the kind of balloony, high volume, mm. different feel to it. And especially if you're riding in like sloppy, wet conditions, having maybe a 2.5 or a 2.6 would be a good option because you just get like slightly higher pressures that will cut through more like, to, get, to get to like harder dirt. And what's really cool about it, this bike is you can do that no problem because you can put a smaller tire on and then just, it's the only bike to have a flip chip on it. So you can basically just invert the flip chip, run it in the high setting to offset the smaller, the even smaller rear wheel. Um, and you're kind of back to roughly where you were before. And, and I, I think that's a great feature because mm -hmm. for me, this bike, if I want to use it for just doing shuttle runs, have it in the low set and just leave it there. And I'd be like, I'd even argue that I'd leave it there all the time. But if some, if you're riding terrain where you're doing a lot of picky climb and there's a lot of steps and there's a lot of things where you do need that pedal clearance and it is the Shimano motor. So it doesn't have the overrun mm -hmm. to the same degree as the Bosch has. You might just want to have it in the high set. And, and you could say that of any of the bikes in this test, um, especially something like the Canyon, yeah. which has a really low BB. Yeah. I don't know why they all don't have it, but we're not talking about the other bikes here. We're talking about the decoy shred. And yeah, we did a lot of shredding. It's a super fun bike to ride. It's got really low standover. Um, you can see here, it's a size large. Like that's the other thing is it's not a big bike. Mm. And I think that, that was in its favor. Um, it's got quite a short head tube. Um, you've got loads of like seat post range of adjustment here. Like I said, standover is really good. So the bike just kind of disappears beneath you. It never impedes like mm. your, your body movement. And like, there's an argument that even if like this bike was 5399, you can get a replacement battery for just over 600 pounds. So for six grand basically, which is the same price as the Canyon, 
you could have 1080 watt hours of battery <laughs> yep. power on this beast yep. and i mean like for the kind of riding it's designed for and the kind of riding that i really like to do on this bike having a spare battery in in the car the van mm. to come back to like yep. you're never going to run out of juice yeah so was, was there anything on here that that was annoying oh yeah um <laughs> There's always something that's annoying with an e-bike. <laughs> um, you've got to be really careful how you clean this bike. This isn't the only YT uh, decoy we've had. Um, and if you turn it upside down, kind of pressure wash the wheels to get them spinning, and then like water can get into the connection here with the battery mounts, and then basically you go to turn it on, and either won't turn on or it'll turn on and freeze. That's the only thing. Okay. You just have to be careful. Like it's a little bit. It kind of collects dirt around this elevated bridge here. And like I said before, I mentioned on some of the other bikes, the ISCG mounted chain guide mm. makes it a bit, of a, it's a bit of a mud magnet, but you're gonna be cleaning it a lot because you're gonna be riding it a lot because it's just, it's such a fun bike. And I mean, it's, it's really, when you're testing e-bikes, it's really easy to kind of just think, oh, like lots of things don't matter because the motor and the weight, mm. they kind of mask the suspension, they mask inefficiencies. But then when you get them all together and they've all got the power and they've all got the range, then you just start looking at the ride quality and this bike had by far mm. the best ride quality. It was just such a blast. So there we go, the winner of our e-bike of the year test in the direct sales category, the YT Decoy Shred. It's no lame duck. And if you don't want to take a punt on buying a bike online and have it delivered to your door, then be sure to check out part one of our e-bike of the year test where we check out all of the bricks and mortar brands.